Greetings from the center of the universe. My name is Calvin, and this is the planetarium at the center of the universe. Although it is much smaller than many planetaria out there, it still entertains humans all the same. But even a small planetarium such as this is not practical for your own home. For that, we need the next best thing, Stellarium. It's an entire planetarium that fits inside your computer. I'll show you how it works. You can get Stellarium at their website, stellarium.org. The program is free, open source, and community funded. So just download the appropriate installer for your operating system. There's also uh, Stellarium Web, uh, which just runs in your browser so you don't have to download anything, but it has way less features. And there's also a user guide that goes way more in depth than this video. This is just uh, for the basics. So let's get into Stellarium. Okay, so here we are in Stellarium. When you first start it up, you'll either be looking at a sunny sky or a starry night, depending on uh, the time. You can see my time at the bottom here. When I put my mouse down here, it opens up this menu. Um, you can see my time here, um, just the frame rate and uh, the field of view, um, how much of the sky, how much of the area you can see at one time and then over here is my location i'm on earth and in victoria and if you move the mouse uh, on the left side you'll bring up the left menu so i'll explain uh, these menus in a second uh, just remember that you can click and drag to look around at the sky which is really important um, you can also use the arrow keys as well just notice that you can't actually like roll the camera um, we're on an azimuth mount here, uh, just like a telescope. So this is sort of what we get. Uh, we can also zoom in though by using the mouse wheel to scroll to see the sun and Venus there. And now there's Jupiter's uh, title coming up here. Here's Jupiter. You can zoom all the way in and see its moons as well. You can see it sort of drifting along the sky as the Earth rotates. Notice that uh, if you zoom out a little too far, it kind of starts to look distorted, uh, which is kind of hard to look at. So you can see the field of view changing here. Okay, let's look at uh, some of these uh, bottom options here. I'll just go through a, a few of the interesting ones and ignore some of the other ones that you can figure out on your own. Uh, so we can start, let's start with the ground. You can turn the ground off if you want to be able to just look anywhere. And you can also turn the atmosphere off so that uh, even if the sun is up, you can still see the stars. You can turn the cardinal points on and off, of course. Uh, deep sky objects are like uh, nebulae and galaxies and stuff. So that highlights those. And then same with planets, their labels are on by default. You can turn them on and off. Uh, this switches the mount, so we can be go from an azimuth mount to an equatorial mount. So that's sort of a different way that telescopes are mounted. And then uh, we can center objects. So uh, when you are looking around at things, you can click on them, and it brings up a lot of information. Some of it is interesting. And we can use this button uh, here to just center on it and lock on. So that if we are zoomed in, we stay locked on rather than drifting. I can right click to disable that and then it goes back to our view being locked to Earth itself. Okay, uh, this button is just night mode, which is a little easier on the eyes if you actually bring your computer outside at night to do some observing. Uh, full screen mode is self-explanatory. This is all kind of explanatory, self-explanatory as well. That's just um, highlight certain things. But uh, more interestingly is the time travel options here. So whenever you click on fast forward, for example, it increases the speed by 10 times, I believe. And so you can really get it going if you need to. Um, and then of course there's reverse to slow down time. Um, we can click here to go to normal time rate. And you can look at the clock to see it's back to normal again. We'll actually reverse it if you click it enough times. Go back to normal, and then this button always just sends you back to 
now now and of course that's the the quit button right there uh over here uh we've got just a few different grids that you can look at if you're interested in uh, that and then there's also the constellation lines the labels and also the artwork so these are some of the common options you'll be switching on and off as you uh, play around And the left menu, I'll just show a few of these. So uh, if your time is incorrect or you just simply want to go to a different time, you can open this. Pretty straightforward. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, even years. And we've also got location. So you can change your location uh, by looking for a city in here by searching for you can also just click to a different place on earth and you've got many more options down here to find yourself a good location to look at the stars so we can just close uh, those or leave them open if we want if we want to keep using them here's a more uh, kind of advanced uh, menu here um, you can turn stars straight up on and off um, set the twinkling or any labels and such. There's also the solar system objects, so like uh, moons and planets. Uh, deep sky objects, again, like galaxies and nebulae. Um, you can have uh, different catalogs, the different sort of data sets of them on or off. And markings are just uh, for more of those grids. You can get uh, very specific if you really want to. Landscape is that image that you can turn on and off. There's different ones. We can be on different planets or different places on Earth. And Star Lore uh, is the artwork for the constellations. So there's a few uh, in Stellarium already. The search window is helpful if you want to search for things. You can simply go directly to them if you don't know where they are. We can search for Venus and find that. Uh, it searches uh, a number of different uh, objects. Okay, and the configuration window for actual like system options. I won't go into any of these, uh, but date and time format might be nice if you have different preferences and you can get into more advanced things with uh, tools and scripting as well. Okay, that pretty well covers it for this little uh, introduction. Um, and then we can get into activities in other videos. So look for that. I will simply press this button to quit. Easy as that. Exo Explorations is a grade school level educational resource that teaches about stars in the sky and the planets that orbit them. You can learn more at centeroftheuniverse.org slash exoexplorations.